What's up ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my channel. Now, first thing first, this is going to be a part two. So this is part two of the extraterrestrials video that I recorded. So this is not a brand new video. This is part two. So if you're watching this and you haven't seen the part one yet, you need to see the part one or else this video is not really gonna make any sense. Okay, so this is literally just a continuation off of the most recent video that is in the title of extraterrestrials, um, reptilians, um, and things in that nature. Okay, so this is the part two. So I'm gonna go right into it, no intro needed. So continuing off where we were from the part one, I had mentioned, just to do a little brief recap, I had mentioned what was going on behind scenes in our current society and I was also drawing conclusions in regards to what are the possible extraterrestrial beings that could be inhabiting the high-level elitists uh, in inner bloodlines that are and have been in control of the world for a very long time. Um, so that's what I was covering in the part one. We had gotten down to the root, which was the Rothschilds, the royal families, um, the Sanhedrin Jews, inner Jewish rabbis, um, Rockefellers, Jeff Bezos's people in this nature. And then I was talking about extraterrestrials and how many different types there are. Okay, there's tons, right? We hear about the Pleiadians. I'm just going to name a few Pleiadians. The grays, the tall whites, or whatever. There's like tall whites and tall grays. Reptilians, primarily. Um, insectiles. Okay? So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I want to once again draw awareness to the fact that there are tons of different life forms that live out in the universe. This is a fact. Okay? So... Continuing off of part one, I had mentioned the primary extraterrestrial species that is, you could say, harnessing human energy. Okay? So, once again, continuing off of part one, I had also drew a very big context about what's going on in our day-to-day -day society. And obviously, when you walk around... Um, you can see, and if you're a remote viewer like myself, you can literally see a parasitic entity or a parasitic spirit energy field that inhabits most human beings. It literally sits on the top of their head. And it was known as the mud shadow within the series of um, Carlos Casaneda's book specifically the book called Active Side of Infinity. So if you want to know a little bit more about this parasite and where its more ancient shamanistic root is coming from, you can read the book, The Active Side of Infinity. Um, but yeah, so that was, uh, that was something that I definitely did in part one, which was discussed that the reality we live in, there is some form of energy that is feeding energy or feeding off of human energy. So there is a, a spirit that is doing this. So the question was, and I covered this in part one, was we want to figure out where that's coming from, right? We want to figure out how did this parasite get there? Where did this mud shadow come from? Why is it there? And let's trace that back farther to the deepest route that we can get to. So we've already drawn the conclusion that when it comes to these inner bloodlines, these inner elites, the royal families, people in this nature, the Sanhedrins, they are walk-ins for these extraterrestrials. So a walk-in is a human being who allows these extraterrestrials to influence them to the degree where they lose their human awareness and they completely get taken over by these extraterrestrials. And they do the bidding 
of these extraterrestrials because their awareness is primarily being ran by them. So since they're walk-ins, they are structuring the entire society that we live in to be a food source for these extraterrestrials that are primarily inhabiting these inner elites, okay? Because they're walk-ins. And in return, they have dominance over the economy in regards to complex money, number, energy, where they can literally print money, use it as a form of energy. So in return, as being these walk-ins for these chaotic extraterrestrial beings, they are able to have, once again, economic dominance and from that they can use that money how they please and place themselves in luxury houses all over the world they have complete economic freedom to do what they want but reality is is that they're not in control of their consciousness and they're not in control of their awareness and that will not last forever and obviously with the time that we're in now it's not it's coming to an end and also, just to throw this in, this has been documented. It has been documented throughout time that these things happen and that at some point in time, there is going to be a new order that comes in and destroys the current order. So the current order you could think of as being these inner elites that are running the economy, that are running the mass collective, controlling it with a cult magic and science and it's been documented in the ancient times that there would be new quote-unquote magicians new sorcerers that will come through and destroy the current order and build a new one and this is literally where we're at in regards to the bigger frame or scale of evolution okay so with that being said now we can go back to what I was talking about in regards to, okay, we're tracing the roots back to these extraterrestrial beings that are insectile. Okay, so when we're looking at extraterrestrials and when we're trying to figure out as a human being living on Earth, for someone who's gotten to the point where they're like starting to realize there's something much more sinister going on, than just people being ignorant and just people blindly being headless chickens, we're starting to realize that there's a, a high level of energy manipulation that is stemming from somewhere else that's trying to farm human, human consciousness, um, human awareness. So if you've gotten to that level, now the question is, which species is it? What exactly is harvesting human energy and why are they doing it okay so obviously i've mentioned there are many different types of species we have the reptilians the pleiadians the grays the whites whatever you want to whatever else there is tons but there's the insectiles and they are a very prominent one that we want to draw our awareness to because as a remote viewer myself, and as someone who studies this subject from other uh, very aware sources, I don't learn from people who don't know what they're talking about, okay? I am a professional occultist. I've gone very far in my initiation, and the only people that I learn from and the only people that I really communicate with and um, you could say uncover mysteries with are other people that have been through very high level occult initiations and other people that have the skill set to remote view, have the skill set to um, really be able to decipher um, things within the astral or you could say time like space. Okay. And the reason why I do that is because I want to get to the roots of what's going on cosmically and how that's affecting earth. I'm tired of hearing people talk about, oh, it's the reptilians and these people are reptiles. And um, I'm tired of hearing people saying, oh, we're screwed. You know what I mean? Like um, there's nothing that we can do about it. You know, it's these beings created us and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, 
I'm tired of hearing all that stuff because none of that's true. Okay, none of that's true. If 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 these extraterrestrial beings and species were so powerful and they wanted to completely dominate Earth or essentially take over Earth, they would have done it by now in regards to physically traveling here and taking rulership or ownership. They would have done that by now. They have higher levels of technology than we have in, in that aspect. But they haven't done that. And the reason why they haven't done that is because there's something in the human being that is more powerful than these extraterrestrial species. We carry certain energies and certain attributes that are much more powerful than what these extraterrestrials have. That's why they, that's why you could say a lot of them want to feed on the human race and the human uh, mass collective because we carry certain energies that they don't have. Okay? The physical plane, Earth, is literally the most solid plane in the universe, to my knowledge, and to every other professional cultist that I've ever talked to or I've ever studied from. We all understand this. And there is something very valuable to Earth. A lot of people think that Earth is at the bottom of the food chain. We're literally, we are at the top of the food chain. We are literally one of the highest levels in the food chain in regards to uh, our potential as human beings. This is something a lot of people don't talk about, but it's true, okay? And one of those reasons is because we have the ability to connect with source, which is evolution itself, and other species don't have that ability. Um, that's why they try to incarnate here on Earth so that they can gain that ability. Um, so, what I've been able to remote view and from the people that I've studied that are very powerful and very wise and have done a lot of um, practice in regards to the occult field, what they've been able to remote view as well is that there is this specific species that is the ins insectile and they have their own planets, they have their own uni uh, their own galaxy, but it's, once again, as I mentioned in the part one, it's very similar to Earth, except it's except it has a, a complete opposite polarity in regards to, and I did mention this in, in part one, where here the insect is like lowest on the food chain and over there the insect rules okay the insect is the primary being and the mentality on this other planet of these insect tiles is hive mind mentality meaning they all have a specific role they're all focused on what their role is and they act in alignment with that role and produce outcomes. Cause, effect, cause, effect, cause, effect, constantly. It's a very, you could even say it's very logical and analytical. It's like you got this job, you focus on it, you get it done, you add to the bigger piece. Uh, hive mentality. Okay? So, with that being said, in that other reality where these insectiles are coming from it is not as solid as earth so that is what they're looking to farm from the mass collective now this insectile race also farms energy from reptilian races also farms energy from grays and whites and all kinds of um other extraterrestrials. So what I'm getting at is that these insectile beings, they are predominantly one of the highest level races, beings that exist within the universe. 
and they have some of the highest level technology to be able to farm energies from other planets like Earth, okay? And they do spend a lot of their focus on Earth because they want that solidity that we have, which is produced by love. Love gives them what they want. The energy of love is what they harness in their plant to their planet um, because love is an energy they don't have access to. Because love, remember as I said, uh, I said this in part one, um, we as humans, what makes us different than any other species is that we can love and hate something at the exact same time. So you can love somebody, but you can hate when they're late. You can love somebody, but you can hate that they don't wash their dishes when they finish eating. So that ability to love and hate at the same time is very powerful. And that produces, that is what love is. The fact that you can love something and hate something at the same time, that's what true love is. Um, so that's what they, they farm from us, from the human race, and that's what they really like. So they spend a lot of time on the human race. But as I mentioned, there are other species that are also being farmed by these insectile species, okay? So the way that these insectile beings farm energy is that in their planets, in their galaxy, their reality is very different than what it is here on Earth. So as I mentioned, Earth is very solid. Well, in their planet, they can change things very fluidly in regards to, since things aren't solid like they are here on Earth, in their reality, they can see something and they can shift its structure or shift its form by lucid viewing in their reality. They're very good at that. They can lucid view very fluidly because that's just how their planet is built. And they have a whole different um, system over there. It's completely different than Earth. So because they are trained primarily in the astral or in the time-like space realm to be able to use their mind to be able to change things, change the structures of things, they are very profound and very high level at astral abilities and astral travel. So these beings, these insectiles, primarily work in the astral plane. So in their planet, when they do astral things, it's more real to them than it is here on earth. So what I'm saying by that, what I, what do I, what do I, what I mean by that is that when they do things in the astral, in their planet, it's actually physical. It takes a very quick physical manifestation. So... They are able to literally, for example, let's say I am looking at my camera right now and I imagine the camera turning off. Well, in their planet, that can happen. Okay, so they could imagine the camera turning off and it will turn off. But it, it's different over at their planet because here... We're so used to physicality. So they, the fact that I can't turn things off with my imagination from sitting right here is something that from their planet would be very strange to them. The fact that I can stand up and hold my camera and it has weight to it, that's something that they lack in their planet. Once again, their planet is more geared towards time-like space, timeline shifting. It's more geared towards the astral. Here is very physical. So I can literally stand up and I can punch my camera screen and it would break. That's something they can't necessarily do from their planet. 
So these are energetic beings primarily. They're not physical like you think. Okay, so with that being said, they are very good at astral traveling and their technology is very high level and directly correlated to time like space, the astral. So they have the ability to lay down and they can travel using their imagination and literally manifest themselves on different planets. And you don't necessarily see it unless you have high level remote viewing skills or if you're a psychic. But if you do have these remote viewing skills and you are a psychic, you can see it. You can see how they show up. And they show up primarily as these parasites. They are the mud shadows. They are the parasitic entity that exists on people's heads. And there are higher levels of these parasites. So when it comes to the inner elites, the inner bloodlines, the royal families, the Rothschilds, the Sanhedrins, they are being inhabited by the higher level hierarchies of this insectile planet. And they are the ones that are spreading their agenda through our high-level elitists to affect, or I should say infect, the mass collective so that everyone gets controlled by these insectile beings that are literally astrally dreaming on their planet, causing an, an effect on our planet. This is psychic warfare at its finest, and obviously this is a subject that's going to be really hard for a lot of people to understand, but you know, as time goes on, at some point in time, this will make a lot more sense, but right now, there's probably a lot of people there that this is going to be really hard to understand, and this may be a very hard pill to swallow, but this is high-level information that I'm sharing, very high level, and this, once again... This is a hard pill to swallow. So there's going to be a lot of people that listen to this and it's going to be really hard for you to actually understand what I'm saying and actually allow it to uh, integrate itself in you because once again, this is high level information. Not everyone's going to be able to let this integrate right off the bat, okay? Because this is information that when you do integrate, it changes your life. This is what I like to call initiatory information okay this information as you learn about what i'm talking about and you go deeper with it and you allow it to influence your day-to-day -day life it literally will cause changes to your reality okay that's how high level information this is um but yes so these beings these insectiles have an ability to travel astrally because that's their primary form so they're very good at it and they've been doing it for years and they even have technology that aids them in it. So they will travel to different planets and they will harvest energy by possessing the other species that are existing on those planets and overriding their consciousness and then they take what it is that they want from those other species. So I'm going to focus here on Earth. So from humans, they inhabit our awareness and then they suck out all of your love and life force energy, which leaves you in a state of chaos. And actually, it's not just like they suck out all your love and your um, life force energy and then you're in chaos. They, it's very subtle and it's very um, structured. Like the way that they inhabit your awareness is a whole process. Okay, so they put you through a whole process. So, you know, obviously it starts, you're born, you go through traumatic, or first thing first, you, your parents are raising you. Most likely your parents have this parasite because it's been done to them. Um, but let's say your parents hypothetically don't have the parasite. You're born, you know, you go to school where there's, you know, tons of parasites running everyone's awareness, but you go through experiences in your life that are chaotic in nature. We're being constantly a 
afflicted with ritual on a daily basis. Remember, the entire mass collective is run by these inner elites. Not, not anymore, but for the past 600 years, this has been what's going on. And these inner elites have control of everything that you're being indoctrinated with when it comes to schools, when it comes to businesses, when it comes to uh, your nine to five, when it comes to TV, when it comes to what you're seeing on your phone, they're all using high level technology to constantly influence you to get more in a chaotic state. Everything is programmed to get you closer to the parasite. And most people have no idea about it, that there, this even exists. And that's why it's so easy to infect people. Okay. So with that being said, there is a structure to how they get your awareness to fully be taken over. And the structure comes from our society. It comes from our mass collective. And there's people that intuitively know this. They're like, I don't want to sell my soul and work for a corporation. Right? Like you, I've heard many people say that. They're like, I don't, I choose to not work for a corporation because I feel like it's selling my soul. And I get where they're coming from because they're picking up on something very, very sinister and corrupt coming from our mainstream society. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it that you shouldn't get a job because you think you're selling your soul. That's not necessarily the case. Um, but the reality is, is yes, the mass collective is, um, being inhabited by these extraterrestrials. But that doesn't necessarily mean everyone is, you know, there's people like myself that have gone through the process of initiation and have come into their true self, have reclaimed their soul. And now we're talking about this, right? And it's only now 2021 starting to actually be something that people are really taking interest in. Because if I was talking about this five years ago, I would be called completely crazy. Um, you know, people wouldn't even hear it. Right. And I'm, I'm well aware that there's going to be people that think the exact same thing right now, but you know, at the end of the day, it is something that's happening. And as time goes on 20 years from now, what I'm mentioning will actually be a lot more acceptable. Okay. And you'll know this 20 years from now, what I'm speaking about will make a lot more sense. Okay. And there will be a lot more people receptive to what I'm speaking about. Um, but right now, it's still in the early stages, but we're at a shifting point. Okay. So that's what's going on. So the main idea, I don't need to make this video too much longer. The main idea that you want to have in regards to extraterrestrials and the main reason I'm making this video in the part one and the part two is because I want people to have a general basis grounding this to extraterrestrials, how they affect mankind, and to not get lost in everything else that we're being told, okay? To not get lost in this race and then this race, you know, the reptilians, the greys, and the this and the that and the this. Let's focus on the main enemy, okay? The main enemy is this insectile race. They look very similar to the, the alien movie. Not as scary as the aliens from the movie, but they look similar in the body structure. Um, and they are like a hive mind. And they are harvesting energy from other planets. So they are harvesting energies from reptiles. They're harvesting energy from the greys, from the whites. So this is actually one of the primary extraterrestrial races, beings, that is hated by a lot of others. Okay, so there are other races specifically the reptilians, um, there are a lot of factions of reptilians that will aid the human being in planetary technology to be able to fight back against these insectiles. Okay, what I just said is very deep, but this is why I wanted to draw awareness to what, you know, to what I'm speaking about in regards to extraterrestrials. 
Um, in regards to a lot of people think the reptilians are like the primary enemy. Okay, they think that the reptilians are like the beings that are farming all of the human energy. And the reality, I'll tell you a reality that even high level magicians don't, don't know about. And this, once again, this comes from personal experience. This comes from remote viewing that I've done. Remember, like I'm talking to spirits very, very cohesively that are more powerful than these extraterrestrial races, all of them, the reptilians, the greys, the, the insects. The, I'm talking to energies that are much more ancient and you can think of much more universal than these other beings. So you can control these other beings by gaining access to the power that some of these spirits have to offer. Okay, for example, Hecate is one of those spirits. Okay, there's not many of them, but Hecate is one of them, the Dark Mother. And that's pretty much the only one that I would recommend right now. If you're, if you're talking about a spirit that other um, extraterrestrial beings have to serve, or not even have to serve, but can be destroyed by. Um, but you have to know how to use the spirit on the enemy. Because if you don't know what's going on universally, and you don't know about spirit, about certain spirits and which ones have the potential to give you information on how to destroy the, you know, the enemy, then you're not going to know what I'm talking about. It's like handing a teen, a 16 year old, a rocket launcher and saying, destroy your enemies. And they don't even know who the enemy is. And they don't even know how to shoot the rocket launcher. They don't even know what side it comes out, right? It's, it's like that. So the spirit is the rocket launcher, okay? It's a funny analogy I'm creating, but it's real. It's when you know how to use spirits, dark matter energies at that, and you know how to put them in the right area, an area where there is evil or chaos, that is, that is uncontrolled, you can direct that spirit in that area and destroy it and take them out, okay? So, once again, a lot of people think that it's the reptilians that are doing all the, the farming. And I'm not gonna say that it doesn't exist. I'm not gonna say that there isn't or hasn't ever been a reptilian entity or a reptilian being that has tried to farm human life force. I'm not going to say that's, that's never happened because I'm sure it has, right? I'm sure it has. Um, but I will say that that is not the primary being or race of being that is humanity's biggest concern. Okay. It is it, because once again, these insectile beings, they're farming energy from the reptilians and they're farming energy from the greys and from the whites and from all these other extraterrestrials. So primarily, if we're talking about universal, you could say psychic warfare, it's the insectiles that are hated by most races. So for example, when we talk about the reptilians, when we're talking about the greys and the, um, the whites, they're aware of this level of psychic warfare, okay? They're aware of it because they live in planets where things are more malleable. Once again, things like Earth is the most solid plane. That's why on Earth we have some of the least awareness towards what's going on astrally, okay? Because we're in the physical plane. This is a whole different type of experience. In these other planets, their prime primary experience is astral. It's time-like. So they're much more aware of what's going on astrally, cosmically in regards to the, the big scale of things than what us humans usually are. We're more concerned about like, how do I get to work? You know, do I have enough gas? I got to do the dishes, like whole different types of awareness. Okay. And that's what makes earth so powerful is that we have this physical plane. Once again, I can't stress that enough. So 
these insects that are the primary enemy to all these other races, they are aware that human beings can be tricked very easily. Okay, so you will hear a lot of times, and I'm not denying this. I mean, it's I've been in this field for some time now, and I've gone extremely deep with it. So I've had personal experience with it. There are many times where you hear people say, "No, no, no, I'm serious. Like I saw this reptilian, right? I, I saw the the uh, like a reptilian appear. Whether that's astrally, whether it's they had a dream, whether they're psychically seeing it, right? People will say." No, 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 I promise reptilians are evil. I saw it. Like it was right there in front of me or I seen it possess this person or, you know, this reptile, this and this reptilian, that. Um, and people will even take it back to Adam and Eve and the, the snake and the, uh, the snake that uh, influenced Eve to eat from the apple, right? And I'm no, I'm no stranger to reptilians, trust me. I've got all the dragons tattooed on me. I am, I carry a lot of draconian energy, a lot of it, okay? Um, and I, once again, ha I've had direct communication with spirits that the reptilian races communicate with. So I, I, I've gone, I've asked many questions in regards to what, what is the reptilian's agenda? Um, what are they about, you know? what's going on cosmically, things in this nature, okay? And never once have I got information from these mediary spirits that are multidimensional and very cosmic, once again, meaning that these other species literally will talk to these spirits too and use these spirits. So never once working with these same spirits have I been told or have I got the notion that the reptilians are the primary enemy? Never once. Okay, and I'm being very honest. Never once have I been told or was led to believe that it's primary reptilians that are trying to harvest human energy. Once again, I am somebody who highly uses reptilian energies coming from the draconian constellations. I'm highly influenced by it. Okay, I've been attuning myself to these energies for a very long time. And the reality is, is yes, the energies that come from the draconian constellations are very dark in regards to their destructive. So in order to use them here on earth, you have to be responsible. So here on earth, if you're wanting to gain access to these draconian energies, you're going to be put through extreme challenges and initiatory experiences to see if you're able to um, integrate those draconian energies in, into yourself, okay? So that's often why people are afraid of the reptilians because the second you start getting involved with reptilian technology, which is draconian energy, which has its own astrological build to it, you will find yourself going through very challenging experiences here on earth. Okay, very challenging circumstances. Your mind will be tested, your subconscious, your unconscious. You'll start losing things that are, are not serving you. And that scares a lot of people. And people like to point the finger. That's evil, that's evil, that's evil. Okay, so that's one reason why a lot of people like to look at reptilians as being the ultimate evil on earth. Okay, but it's, it's much deeper than that. Okay, it's much deeper. So what I mean by it's much deeper is that this insectile race is very smart and they recognize that the human race can be tricked very easily. So with this insectile race that's feeding on the reptilians, feeding on the humans, feeding on the greys, feeding on these other beings, they're well aware that if they're going to want to trick a mass collective or an entire planet as best as they can, then they're going to pretend that they are something they're not. So what I, what I mean by that is 
these beings, these insectile beings, they're able to travel astrally very well. So that means that they can shape shift, okay? And they are very, very, very good at shape shifting into reptilians, okay? So when they inhabit your awareness from the parasite, they can now influence what you're seeing astrally and psychically to produce reptilian images in front of you or around you to then make you afraid okay so this other species of insectile beings they use the draconian current to produce fear in the human being so they will once again they will infect you from chaos. They will get you into a chaotic state, shell your soul, separate it from your spirit, and then this parasite runs your awareness. Now, now that this parasite runs your awareness, let's say you're psychic, or let's say you're trying to get into occult practices, they can influence your psychic vision. So they can influence reptilian images in front of you, around you, on you, in other people, and they will influence reptilian images to make you think primarily, oh shit, I'm done doing this stuff. I'm done getting involved with this occult stuff. Or if you keep going with the occult stuff, then you, you may very well, and this happens a lot, you'll shift your awareness into reptilians thinking that they're the ultimate enemy. So it's an ultimate scapegoat it's an ultimate distraction when in reality it's an insect that is completely taking over okay they will make themselves look like reptilians because they control your awareness from your prefrontal prefrontal cortex the the motor area which is a form of complete mind control and then they can place images of reptiles coming from the draconian constellation so you're thinking that the reptiles are the 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 uh the reptilians you're thinking that they're the bad guys you're thinking that they're the enemies when in reality it's the insectile beings that are doing it to humankind and they're farming reptilian energies as well so that's how you really trick people on a psychic level um so that's, you know, and another thing that I want to make clear is that, once again, there are occultists that don't understand what I'm talking about. And they will tell you that it's the reptilians that are doing this and it's the reptilians that are doing that. And I'm not saying that the reptilians are this innocent species. I'm not saying that they've never tried things like that before. They, I'm sure they have. Um, but I am going to say that I've never had a problem with them. Um and I use their energies, right? And it's always the occultists that are talking about the reptilians being the primary enemy that are the occultists that aren't initiates of the, the you could say, the, the darker path in regards to the clip-off. And I, I, I personally believe a big part of it is, is because they've never had experience with these draconian energies directly. I know they've had experience with draconian energies, but when you have direct experience with these draconian energies and you allow those energies to initiate you, meaning you become fully receptive to it to gain its power, you realize what's really going on, right? And, and you realize the very subtle truths, which is the, what I'm explaining right now, where it's an insectile extraterrestrial being that's inhabiting the awareness of the human, changing the human's awareness to see things like reptilians to make the human think that the reptilians are the real bad guys. And I'm this is this is deep information. Okay, very deep information, but it's true. Okay? And once again, as I was saying, I've had direct contact with these reptilian beings. I've I've taken on their power. So I am essentially reptilian in nature. So in the astral, 
when I go into time like space, since I've spent a lot of time developing myself, developing my soul, my soul fluid and my spirit, I can very quickly transform into a reptilian. Very quickly. I can shift there and I can go to their planet and I can walk around and I can I can do whatever I want on their planet. I can travel to the to the grays, to the whites. I can shape shift my energies to to look like one of them as well. And I can do the same with the insectiles. That's how powerful a human being is. So that's why when magicians like myself get to the level of power that we're at, and there's a there's quite a few of us now, there used to be only like like a handful on the entire planet. But now there's there's definitely more than 10. There's definitely more than 10. And it's right around that number, somewhere around 10. I know in my own personal experience, I, I'm with four. I know four people that are at the level where we've crossed the abyss. I'm me being the first one. I was the first one who crossed, pulled everyone else with me across that were high level magicians. Okay. In a span of roughly two and a half years, deep, dark initiation to get there. The more of us that are doing this and gaining this power, we're literally taking over the multiverse. So we're mastering Earth, we're connecting to Source, which is the main thing that none of these extraterrestrials can do, only us as human beings. That's what makes us so powerful. That's why they can't destroy our planet. That's why they literally come to our planet to observe and to try and understand and to gain information. As magicians, once again, that have gained this level of power, we are now destroying any of the other extraterrestrial races that are trying to harvest human energy. So we're inverting everything. So we're possessing them back at their planet. And the more chaos they try to spread here, We've inverted their system, so the more chaos that spreads here gets fed to us because now we're the upline in the entire universe. We're connected to source, and we have our own remote viewing bodies. We have our own uh, spirit and soul together, daemon. We have our own astral body that has uplined every other extraterrestrial being. So all the chaos they're spreading here on Earth is uplining to us. And that's why what we're seeing right now happen uh, in the world around us, we're seeing mass chaos because the system as you know it, that's been ran by these inner elites, these inner bloodlines, that were inhabited by these insectile extraterrestrials, the system that they've created, you could say the two-dimensional matrix that they've created to keep chaos alive has completely been inverted and is now starting to crash. That's exactly why you're seeing what's happening in Israel and Palestine against the Israelis and Palestinians right now. And if you think I'm joking, and if you think that I don't know what I'm talking about, go and watch the video that I made called, and this you can scroll down on my channel, watch two videos primarily. And if you watch my past videos, going back to like four, five, six months ago, you're gonna see that the things I've been talking about have actually been manifesting. So the video that I wanna mention is the, the uh, I believe it's titled The Major Ritual Done in DC. Me and one of my brothers, who is very high level initiate, who's crossed the abyss with me, we did a massive life-changing ritual there in DC. And that's all I'm gonna leave it at. But what we did in that ritual specifically is we let loose the black dragon known as Amalek, okay? The black dragon Amalek is the archetype of the enemy of the Jews. So the black dragon being Amalek which stands for mother strength. You could think of the black dragon, the energy that surrounds it is mother strength. That's literally what it represents. It's like the, the ultimate dark source feminine energy. Okay. 
we let loose this dragon in DC. I'm not going to go into depth here, but we let it loose. And we did a very profound ritual to do that behind enemy lines. No one knew what we were doing and we were working in the shadows. But we did it. We traveled to DC and we let loose that dragon at one of the most powerful power zones in the entire grid work of DC. And there's no reversing it. It's set in stone. It's locked in to the grid work because we use death to lock it in. Once again, I'm not going to go into detail, but if you hear about what I'm speaking about in that video, you'll see that what's happening with is, uh, Israel and the Palestinians, you'll see why that's manifested the way it has right now. Okay? Um, if you look up Amalek, you will see, go ahead, go on Safari, go on Google, look up Amalek on Wikipedia, and go ahead, read through it. And you'll see that Amalek is the archetype of the Amalekites. And the Amalekites were a, beat, a group of sorcerers during that time that had war and hated the Jews specifically. And it's not just the Jews because they're Jews, because of their necessarily bloodline, but it's primarily because of the energies that were possessing them at that time, which were the extraterrestrial insectile beings. So Amalek you could think of as this dark dragon, this black, prime, extremely primordial dragon that is directly connected to reptilian energies, directly connected to the draconian constellations, that completely destroys chaos, the insectile entities here on Earth. Just completely destroys Yaldabaoth, completely destroys Jehovah, Yahweh, and... Yeah, we'll leave it there. The Holy Spirit completely destroys it. Okay? And sure enough, I was talking about this around five, four months ago. Even if you watch the video I have on my channel called The Black Dragon Behind the Clip Off, which I literally recorded three months ago. I'm talking about Amalek, and I know what Amalek is, and I know what I did. And now look what you're seeing manifest in Israel right now. So if you think I don't know what I'm talking about, and you think what, what I'm speaking about isn't based in some form of reality, then you're fooling yourself because you can study my channel and you will see the things that I'm talking about um, are actually coming to manifest. Okay? So with that being said, when it comes to reptilians, when it comes to greys, when it comes to whites, you don't want to worship any extraterrestrial, right? You don't want to necessarily reach out to the greys or reach out to the whites or reach out to the reptilians and say, hey, give me your power or hey, you know, what can I, you know, can you help me with this or can you help me manifest this? You don't really want to do that. And I'll tell you why, because you don't fully understand their nature and a lot of the times their nature is to want to take power, okay? So you may be approaching these extraterrestrials wanting to gain whatever it is that you want, like some form of physical manifestation, some form of power, whatever it may be, and they very well could take advantage of you, very well. So you don't want to be approaching them and opening up a doorway that you don't know how to close necessarily. Rather it would make a lot more sense to go to the entities that control them. Or you could say the entities that they go to as well. Because when you go to the spirit, you're talking more so of a connection to something that's geared around some sort of cosmic evolution. So if we're going, if you're going straight to some extraterrestrial being, I mean, think about it. Like you could be going to some extraterrestrial being that's looking at you like a, like just food, right? You don't necessarily know, right? It's like, you know, you see a, a mouse in a, in a, in a hungry dog, right? The dogs, it's not crossing the dog's mind that, oh, this mouse could be nice, right? The dog's just, right? Just going to crush it if it's hungry. 
So when we're talking about dealing with extraterrestrials, if you're not at a higher power level, you're not going to want to go to them and be like, hey, look, you know, like, I want to see if you can help me manifest a new job promotion or get more money in my life, like anything of that nature. That would be stupid because very well you'll be taken over by that um, intelligence, okay? And, you know, there's a lot more, there's a lot more understanding that we need of the universe and these other different planets and other species before you start going out to them. So once again, you, you want to, if you're going to be working in the occult field, you're going to want to be working with energies that have been worked with by other human beings for a long time that have gotten success. So that's going to come down to the main spirits that are more so cosmic in regards to initiation and planetary energy. So if you understand Kabbalah, you have the entire Sephiroth and you have the Klipoth. And in, in both Sephiroth and Klipoth, there's 10 different spheres. And within all those spheres, there's a different planet that's associated with it. And there's different um, spirits that are associated with it. And you could think of them as being cosmic. So what that means is that they play an evolutionary role, okay? Not saying that they're, they're not dangerous either. They can be very dangerous, but if you're approaching it from an evolutionary standpoint, you can gain a lot of value and a lot of power. But if you're going to approach an extraterrestrial, that is just a complete different species that sees that you're vulnerable or sees that you don't know what you're doing, they could easily just manipulate you because you've opened the door. You're trying to work with them. So that, you know, that's something you want to be aware of. Just like with Aleister Crowley, right? Aleister Crowley spent a very long time um, talking to a spirit called Iwas, or you could even say lamb. And this was a complete alien entity. This was not his higher self. This was not his, his daemon. This was a completely different uh, extraterrestrial like entity that, you know, didn't help him, right? Like it, he, 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 when he was working with it, he thought out of self-importance that he was doing something that no other magician's ever done. And that he's had this, now he's got this connection to some other planet that's going to give him all the answers. But really he didn't understand that the backbone of uh, this extraterrestrial spirit that he was talking to was primarily trying to feed off of his energy. That's why um, the spirit told him, um, I believe it was the, um, the, the alien entity told him, um, do what thou wilt, right? And the reality is, of, and I'll make a whole video on that, but the reality is in regards to do what thou wilt, that doesn't mean anything to me. Like, what do you mean do what thou wilt? What, what are you telling me to do? Like, that doesn't seem, that's chaotic in nature, right? Like, do what thou wilt. That's the ultimate prophecy. Shut the fuck up. What do you mean, do what thou wilt? Jump off a bridge? Uh, take a bunch of drugs? And end up in a psych ward? Not being able to pay for anything? Which is what happened to Crowley. Do what thou wilt? That's really what you're, you told me? And that's really the divine law? No, that's not true. Do what thou wilt means nothing. I see where the, I could flip it and change it into something that has meaning where it's like, okay, don't let people constrain you with their belief systems, right? Do what feels right to you. Trust your intuition primarily, but do what thou wilt. That gives somebody permission to just do anything and everything that they feel like impulsively doing, which is a perfect formula for getting somebody into a chaotic state. So that entity that was possessing Crowley, that he was talking to, Lamb Iowas, was feeding off of him. And his teaching, do it thou wilt, fucked up many other magicians because they, they followed his teaching. And they ended up in very similar situations as Crowley. Okay. So um, once again, just to, re just to recap everything, I'm going to end the video. We have found out that there are many extraterrestrial spirits, beings, species, and some are more advanced than others. Um, we, you know, on Earth, we primarily think that it's the reptilians that are the main enemy. There's a lot of us that think the reptilians are the ones that are influencing the, uh, the inner elites and the bloodlines and things in that nature, but I'm telling you right now, that's not true. The reality is it is these insectile beings 
that are so manipulative that once they take a hold of your awareness, they will change what you're psychically seeing because that's their realm. They're, they they essentially rule the astral plane. They, they're very smart in the astral plane. So when you get into psychic practices and things that involve psychic uh, viewing or remote viewing, they can alter your perception if you have a parasite. And reality is, is that 99% of you have a parasite. I wasn't any different when I started my journey, okay? I had a parasite running my awareness too, okay? And I, I was seeing reptilians too. I'm not different, right? I've been through that. So I'm telling you as an actual practitioner, high level initiate, somebody who has direct contact with entities that these other extraterrestrials um, also have contact with, I've got direct information coming from them. And I'm telling you right now, this is what's going on. So they, they will inhabit your awareness and they can shift what you're seeing. And a lot of times what they shift for you and your remote viewing is they'll produce reptilian images because the reptilian images is what scares a lot of people, right? So they'll see a reptilian in front of them. They'll be like, oh my God, holy shit. Oh my God, the reptilians are... They're, they're here. They're trying to. They're trying to take over. And reality is, is it has nothing to do with the reptilians. It's these insectile entities that are making you think it's the reptilians, so that you draw all your awareness to them, and so that you don't hear what I'm talking about, because it's it's way more subtle and sinister than that, right? So the reptilians are actually when you start tapping into draconian energies and reptilian energies. Remember, they don't like these insectiles either. So you could almost look at them as a power source okay so the reptilians have a lot of valuable technology that you would want to tap into to destroy these insectile beings and it's the human being that has the ability to really destroy them so that's why you know when you when you really develop your power as a professional occultist you start to realize like towards the end uh phases of your initiations some of the most profound uh, spiritual energies that you work with are dragon energies, right? Like those are some of the most important ones, if not the most important, because dragon energies, dragon spirits are the energies that control earth ley line systems. So they are the spirits that are in charge of the earth energies here on earth. So that's draconian in nature. That's reptilian in nature. So... Yeah. Um, let's see. So that's understood. You know, once again, you don't want to be going out and necessarily trying to communicate with the reptilians or communicate with the grays or the, the tall whites or whatever else that exists out there. You don't want to communicate with them because they, they, they may not have necessarily cosmic plans for you, right? For your evolution reality is is they probably don't really care too much about if you evolve or not they're probably looking at you like oh maybe i can possess this person and get something from them or maybe i can walk through them and incarnate myself so you don't want to be looking at that um rather draw your awareness to uh evolutionary spirits which are um once again spirits that are directly connected to kabbalah specifically i would recommend the the ones that are connected to the clip off because they're going to give you real, I mean, they're not easy spirits to work with, but they're going to give you very um, uh, profound transformation. They're going to, they're going to unveil things very quickly. And um, you know, that's, that's what this whole path is about is getting the real truth. Right. But once again, it's, it's not for everybody and I don't recommend everybody do that. But if you are somebody that's wanting to figure out the real answers, you, you're going to want to focus on not the Sephirothic archangels. You're not going to want to focus on them. They're not going to help you get real truth. Okay, I promise you that. It's going to be the Clipothic spirits. Um, Lucifer is a great one. Um, Lucifer is a great one. Lilith is a great one. Uh, for sure, Hecate. I would highly recommend Hecate. I mean, Hecate for sure is a great one. Uh, Belly L is a great one. Um, and I would stay with these four. You know, these are four very dark, powerful, multidimensional beings that, once again, other 
Um, other extraterrestrials also communicate with, and they can give you co very cosmic understandings uh, that you can use that and, and turn into your own power, okay? Um, so yeah, so the main enemy really of mankind is this insectile race, okay? It is this insectile being that lives on a planet that's very similar to Earth, but it has a different... Uh, different polarity to it. Remember, like on their planet, the insects rule. And here, the human being rules. Their planet is not as solid as Earth. It looks similar to Earth, but it's not even close to as solid. And here, everything's completely solid. Okay? On their planet, they can't love and hate at the same time. And they work in a complete hive mind mentality. Here, we can love and hate at the same time, and we don't always work in a hive mind mentality. Okay, a lot of times we 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 rebel against that. Okay, so yeah, this is the main this is the main understanding. Now, obviously, this is a subject where I didn't even scratch the surface, right, of some of the stuff I know about it, and some of this, you know, and and I didn't even scratch the surface of this topic. This is something that's obviously going to be covered throughout time. You know, this is something that I'm going to be covering in the future as well. Um, that's why I spent so much time on this video, making a part one and a part two, because I want to be very clear in my communication so that people recognize that I'm not just somebody sitting here, like making stuff up or just blurting out what I think, right? This is stuff I've spent a lot of time trying to uncover. And I've seen a lot of sides of the, uh, the spectrum, all the way from David Icke over to Alex Jones, um, other occultists, what their perception is, and I've been really adding pieces of the puzzle together coming to a, you know, this real conclusion because obviously something is going on and there is a truth behind what it is, right? So I'm trying to find the truth, not just speculate, not just settle for, you know, things that I'm not intuitively feeling like are the, the answers, right? So I'm still obviously uncovering a lot about it. There's still tons of questions I have and once again, I'll, I'll continue to dive into this and, and learn more about it and eventually share it. But um, yeah, once again, I think I did do a good job at making it clear about who the elites are in our current society and why they do what they do. Um, and also in regards to extraterrestrials, uh, what, the, what the main extraterrestrial species is that's influencing the the human harvesting of awareness and life force here on earth. Um, and also clearing up the fact that it's the rep the reptilians are not the main species that's harvesting human energy, clearing up the fact that it's not the grays. It's not the, uh, excuse me. It's not the grays. It's not the whites, it's not most of these other species. It's an insectile dominant species. And they, they, they may, they not may, they have different, species amongst them too, right? This is, this is something that goes very, it's very, uh, it goes very deep. Like these insectile beings, although there may be one major planet that they do their influencing to take human energy from, they also have different planets, okay? They have different life on other planets as well that are a part of their galaxy or a part of their constellations and things in that nature. So it's a subject that does go very deep. Um, and once again, you know, we'll go deeper into it at some point in time, but yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Also hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can and definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. Cause I love to see my subscribers shoot through the roof. Okay. Um, and then if you would like to gain access to exclusive content, I would definitely recommend joining my Patreon. Where you can find my Patreon is you go to the drop down in the description. You're going to see the Patreon link at the top. It says my Patreon right next to it. Go ahead and click that link. Um, so on my Patreon, I have exclusive content that is not on my YouTube channel, only for my Patreon members. Um, and just to give you a little bit of an idea of what kind of content I have on there, I have content that is in the nature of actual occult practices that I'm performing on camera. And then afterwards, I teach you how to do it yourself so that you get um, highest probability of success 
doing that practice, okay? I'm uh, someone that likes to learn by watching, like video format, so, you know, that's why I'm making this type of content. It, it's what helps me learn, okay? Um, so, for example, one of those practices is how to do an invocation, which is absolutely fundamental when it comes to the occult field. And basically what that means is you are calling a spirit to you, and the goal is to be taking on the energy and the power from that spirit by being receptive to its influence in regards to letting it teach you certain things that you need to learn or letting it even shift uh, your perspective and your, uh, yeah, you could say your perspective because with that you can have energetic shifts and you do get energetic shifts. So once again, the overall goal is to take on the at attributions of that spirit and its power. Okay, and that increases your psychic power, that increases your psychic um, abilities, and that increases your psychic protection overall, okay, because you're increasing your energy field. Um, so that is a video that I have on my Patreon and other ones in that nature. And then the other bit of the content is going to be in regards to Kabbalah. So I'm breaking down the entire tree of life, all the way from the Sephiroth to the Klipoth, every single sphere individualized giving you the symbolism of the sphere, the planetary energy of the sphere, everything that's associated with the sphere, the spirit connected to it, and my own personal experience having initiated through that sphere myself, which I believe to be extremely valuable information if what you're trying to do is learn about the process of developing um, occult power in regards to initiation. You're going to want to know about Kabbalah, okay? And that you know, on my Patreon is a great source to study that, okay? Um, so yeah, so that's on my Patreon. In order to gain access to that content, you have to at least be a tier two member or up. In order to be a tier two, it costs $9.95 a month, and that is a reoccurring payment, okay, a month. Um, but if you do the math, that will literally come out to less than a dollar a day, so really there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to afford it with the value that I have on there, okay? Now there's four tiers altogether. The highest tier um, is an actual service that I perform for you, and the service is in regards to changing your energy field. So I, go, I do my own ritual um, very strategically, um, and I structure it to literally completely change your energy field. Okay, I'm not gonna go into too much depth about what I do. Um, you can check that out for yourself at the end of this video. There's gonna be a little video at the top that explains what I do in that service. It's called the Vampire Service, um, and it's highest tier members get access to that. So with that being said, um, I would like to give a special shout out to the highest tier members of the Patreon. All their names are going to be mentioned in the parentheses below that Patreon link. So huge shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. And then second shout out I would like to give is to all of my Patreon members in general. Huge shout out to all of you. I appreciate all of you for taking your knowledge and your practices to that next level. And then a third shout out to all of my YouTube subscribers. I highly appreciate all of you as well. Okay, my battery is literally about to die right now, so I don't want to make it too much longer. If you would like to book a tarot card reading with me, go to the second link below. It's a square appointments. Check it out. Um, I do very powerful tarot readings, um, and I'm going to leave it there. Okay, other than that, I'm going to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or nights, wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.